The Princess Leia sponsor of this video is Don Christensen, who is a funny guy, so here's a joke. Have you tried any of the gluten-free Wookiee cookies? No, but I heard they were a little chewy. In this video on Star Wars Rebellion, we'll be setting up for a two-player game for players playing their first game. First, each player chooses a faction, either Imperial or Rebel. The players then take all of the chosen faction's pieces. Now, the placement of starting leaders. Each player has four leaders that do not have recruit icons. These four leaders are placed in the leader pool on the player's faction sheet. The rest of the leaders with recruit icons are placed near the game board. Now, I'm assuming you've at least laid down the game board. Take a look at the left side. We can place this time marker on space 1 of this track and the reputation marker on space 14 of the track. Now, the objective deck. These objective cards are sorted into three piles based on the value on their backs, 1, 2, and 3. These are placed on the objective space on the board, first pile 3, then pile 2, then pile 1. The rebel player will then draw one objective card, keeping it hidden from the imperial player. Now, each player will prepare their individual action decks. Each player takes all action cards that have a recruit icon shown here, and then shuffles them to create the action deck. It is placed face down next to this action deck label. Action cards that do not have a recruit icon are not used during the first game, and are returned to the game box. Now, the Space Tactic and Ground Tactic decks are shuffled and placed into individual piles within reach of both players. The remaining markers and dice are placed nearby as well. These are mission cards, which can be sorted into the following. Starting mission cards, which have this curved arrow. Each player has four starting missions, and they are set to the side. Project cards, which have this white star in the bottom corner. The Imperial player takes the project cards and shuffles them together, placing them on the project space of the game board. Finally, remaining missions, which each player takes and shuffles. These mission decks are placed face down next to the side of each faction sheet, labeled as mission deck. Now each player will place their units and loyalty markers on the game board, according to page 16 in the rulebook. I won't show you this since it wouldn't make any sense to waste your time. Once players have played their first game, they can refer to the setup on page 18 of the rulebook to place units. Now, the Rebel player takes the probe cards and removes all systems that contain Imperial units. From the remaining probe cards, the Rebel Alliance chooses one card and places it face down under the Rebel base location space. The rest of the cards can be shuffled and placed onto the probe deck space on the game board. In the first game, the Rebel player should choose a system not adjacent to any Imperial units. Finally, each player will draw their starting hand. Each player takes the four starting mission cards, then draws two cards from their mission deck. This hand is kept secret from the opponent. Before I let you go, let's talk about how players win in Star Wars Rebellion. First, the Imperial player wins the game if they locate and conquer the Rebel base's system. That means that no Rebel units are in the system, and at least one Imperial unit is in that system. The Rebel player wins the game if the Reputation Mark and Time Marker are ever on the same space of the track. At that point, the Rebels have garnered enough sympathy and reputation to successfully revolt against the Imperial forces. The Rebel player typically gains reputation by using objective cards. They begin with only one objective and draw one during each refresh phase. Once these are fulfilled, the player earns the reputation shown on the top left of the card. The reputation marker is then moved that number of spaces toward the time marker. Finally, the Death Star. We'll talk about this more in a future video, but if the Death Star happens to destroy the Rebel base in one fell swoop, then the Imperial forces immediately win the game. In the next video, we'll be looking at the assignment phase. The executive sponsor of this series is Gabriel Thorne. The high ground sponsors are Carolyn Callahan and Greg Merwin.